Welcome to the Kenny Hack. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is pull off your existing X20, S20 laser module. You'll just undo the set screw and pull it out. Pull this out of the harness. Then you're going to take out your old Z channel. Uh, it usually has black screws in it. You'll pull them off. This is pretty much the exact same slider plate, except for this one has a place for these set screws to come into the side here and hold the new R30 module in place. So like this, this new Z plate will fit in the old existing holes that the old Z plate was used for, but this little adapter plate allows this module to slide down about a half inch. And I'm guessing you're going to need that because the focus length of this R30 module is a lot shorter than what the 120 watt, 20 watt uh, module is. So you want to be able to drop it down closer. When you're going to exchange these, you should just be able to pop the R30 back off and put on your normal X20 laser module. And it'll just be able to sit a little bit lower. Yes, I don't think you'll have to change this plate in and out every time. Once you got this changed out, you should be able to use this Z plate for either the R30 or your old X20 module. Something else to note, like the old screws you can pull out for your old Z plate. They're the black ones. Don't reuse them into these bolt holes. Use the supplied silver ones. The old black ones have a thicker head and they stick out just far enough to when you try to slide the laser module down, they'll get held hold up on them screw heads. So use the supplied silver ones that have a little thinner head and they recess in below this Z plate. So for now this is the best way I could see to mount this new circuit board. You only got about a four inch little wire harness to go from this new circuit board to the R30 module. So it's got to be mounted pretty close. What I did is like there's a little open grill up here for that kind of looks like a fan. I ran a zip tie through there. There's holes on the very back. So I ran a zip tie through there. So this deal is kind of sitting down on the zip ties between these two roller plates. And it took about three zip ties to go through the front, up, and another one up the back. Two of them almost reached, but it was just a little bit short. So I used a third one. And that harness is in there pretty good. It doesn't feel like it's going to wobble out. I kind of hooked the zip tie over the nuts to keep it in place. But in the top here is the new power cord. So you're going to want to do a little cable management. And I'm probably going to have to do a little bit of better job eventually. Get some more twist ties. Get this all pulled together a little bit better but I think it's going to work for this initial setup and test because this uh, R30 needs this extra circuit board and now that's your new power switch is right there and that's how you turn the module on and coming into this like right up here in the bottom right this is the four line input coming from your control board so it, the controller comes in here comes out through this six wire and the six wire is what runs down to your new r30 module it's pretty simple pretty straightforward there i don't be pretty hard to wire this up wrong there's some uh three three wire inputs there's a little bolt block over here but for the x20 
hook up this. These don't seem to get used. It's just these two wires and an auxiliary power. So when I'm not using this, I will unhook the power. I'll pull this four wire out. I can take this R30 module off. And then like once I pull that four wire out, this is what goes in, will go back into the old X30. Now the old X20, I'm sorry, X20 module. And if you thought the old X20 module was big with the four, four laser modules in there, this is how big the R30 is. It's huge. Huge in modern parlance, but uh, and I know I know they're coming out with a the six way five watt of, like this is a four module. They're coming out with the six module. Atom stack is, and it's probably going to be pretty close to the size of this R30 module. This is a lot of weight to sling around. It's a big unit, so we'll have to see how. It does at higher speeds trying to sling all that mass but so far it looks to be hooked up I think I'm ready to go I'm gonna I got some metal coins and we're gonna be trying out a little metal coin engraving quick like and see how it does okay one of the first problems I've encountered is like this is the old I'm sorry this one is the old Z-Track that doesn't have the side set screws. And it goes on here on this new R30 module, slides like butter, perfect. No hang-ups. I get the new Z one that has these holes drilled in it to clamp onto the side. And I'm having all kinds of issues of getting this thing to slide up and down. It's really herky-jerky, gets stuck in a lot of places. I, I, I really don't like this kind of Z-adjustment anyways. Like, I've had problems with these side set screws coming loose during a long project, and all of a sudden your laser wobbling out of focus. Um, these are a little bigger set screws than previous models, so maybe it'll hold up. But I don't know why this... Like, it'll kind of go on this way, but the screws will be over towards this end, and I don't know if they'll run into the truck on the side. How it's supposed to be mounted is with the set screws pointing to this side, and I can't hardly even get this module to slide on. It's, it's like super tight right there, and it's all, it just hangs up something bad. So I'm not sure what's going on with this thing. It looks to be the same. It feels like it's a little lighter gauge of metal. Like you can see how thick this one is. And we'll see if I can get this thing back off. I mean, they look identical. This one here is the new one. This one's the old one. Um, I'm just not sure why and I've tried running it up and down and it's getting a little bit looser. I might just have to keep working that thing until it starts running smooth. Just not really sure what's going on with this. So here it is burning my first uh, test sample. I don't really have it set up in the most ideal situation. I had a rotary set up under here. And I got to pretty much take all this back off, put my other module on. I got some weekend orders I got to fill. So this was kind of a just a quick test to see how it does. Quick first impressions. Um, like I said, when I had to put them thumb screws on the left side, it does hit over here on the truck before it hits the limit switch on the x-axis. And the y-axis the limit switch down here also if you have this module lower down far enough it's going to hit on the frame here before it hits the limit switch 
Now I gotta test it out and hopefully I can just raise the module up high enough to where it clears this and I can zero it back to home and then go to the center of the work area and drop the module down. You know, it's like you're, you're gonna kinda lose your home position, but I never trust that this hits zero, zero every time. I usually have it like when it finishes, goes over to the side. I gotta adjust this all now. Like I said, it's my first try. I had to manually hit the limit switches to get them to stop. So my zero, zero was somewhere out here. And I had like, I had to move the piece around to get it to where I wanted. It was, I said, a quick test run just to see how it did. And this here's the first little metal token I burned. Uh, this was at a thousand millimeters per minute, 85 percent power, 0.03 resolution. I think uh, from what I read this infrared has a beam size of 0.03 like the normal diodes are usually around a 0.08 so it's a little finer of a laser and so doing this little 38 millimeter token took about a half hour so you're definitely not gonna be in high production mode with this module kind of more back down into the hobby speeds gifts personal use where long as time and production isn't a huge factor this might be something to add into your you know deals if you're really wanting to do a lot of production speed probably gonna have to go to a fiber laser to get this to get metal engraving this it, it definitely etched it didn't really emboss it very thick it's you know it's enough to discolor it but running my finger over it only very minor embossing so if you're looking for a deep emboss it would have to go even slower than a thousand millimeters per minute so you can kind of, like I said, there are some problems out of the box just with that big module. The, the regular limit switches aren't hitting perfect. I got to figure out what's going on with that uh, Z adjuster, why it's hanging up on the frame so bad. And hopefully, I can get it to where my thumb screws flip over to the other side so it doesn't hit on the truck. I'll, I'll maybe shut the video off see if I can adjust that into a position where I can hit the limit switches to get it to home properly and then go back to my work area and then drop the laser down into position. I'll see how I can do with that. So in order to get my current set up to work I had to take out this bottom thumb screw and now it should be able to come all the way over here and hit the X limit switch I was able to raise it up high enough that it's not going to hit this frame. You can see it's definitely like it's enough to where you got to get it up high enough. But so far that seems to work. We'll slide it out here and then hit the home button. So that's kind of where you'd want to set it when you first home it. Then you can say go to the center of my work area swing it out there and on this module it's got like a little flip down lever honestly that's kind of a chintzy little height gauge in my opinion it shouldn't be that wobbly it should be I, I gotta look in there the screw might have just come lo loose maybe that should be more firm than that it seems to latch in place fine but it's just a little bit loose. You know, there's a, about, almost probably about a half a millimeter in height of play, a wiggle in that for the height adjustment. Another little deal that's a bit off, might have to play around with and get set properly. 
Um, really, first impressions. Overall, not really that high. There's a lot of little bugs and quirks that you got to get fixed to get it working. I didn't think getting the module hooked up was too bad. It seemed to work pretty good out of the box. It's just getting around these limit switches, getting this Z to work properly. And I was hoping for at a thousand millimeters of speed, a little deeper of an emboss onto that coin. It, that's workable. It looks it looks pretty good, but I want I was hoping for a deep enough emboss that you could feel it. And honestly, I really can't feel much of a raised surface on the areas that weren't etched. So, I mean, I could almost just coat that with a paint or a dry molly and burn it with my regular uh, diode laser and infuse the paint in black and get a good looking coin that way too. So, very first impressions, kind of probably about a C. <laughs> uh, these modules are about 500 some dollars, so very pricey. I'd really think if you're looking to go this route, maybe start looking into a fiber laser. I think that probably you're probably bottom level level fiber lasers. You're looking twelve to fifteen hundred dollars for like maybe a three inch by three inch working area. But if you're looking for deep engraving on metal, so far. I'm not sure if this is the module you'd be looking for. This is just going to etch metal. It's not really so far looking to do a deep engrave. So I think we'll kind of leave that here for my first impression. Kind of a put together video. First impression, first burn. Well, I'll, when I get my orders filled this weekend, hopefully I get more time to play around with it and we'll maybe try a few other materials and see what we can do.